educated on what we expected of him. He was engaged, and we empowered him. So our next Kaizen example is from Karen. Karen used a crane to lift an electric motor from the material handling pallet to the assembly pallet. One day a light bulb went off in Karen's head. By the way, do you like our subliminal forklift reference here in this light bulb? I told you you'd start to see some forklifts every once in a while. Now Karen thought if we change the assembly table to a roller table, we could roll the motor and we wouldn't need the crane. And he said, brilliant. Let's check it out. Let's go to work and see what we can do. So here's the final result. We built a roller table, got rid of the crane, and now the pump motors slide right onto the cart. And then the new process eliminates even pinch points that the crane made on the motor and also is much more efficient. Let's listen to Karen talk about her experience. So before doing all this and getting this manipulator, I actually had to use a handheld crane, overhead crane, to take the pump and set it on this carrier. shared the story about there was another person helping her and again she was really engaged in the process. So of course we made sure to recognize and reward both Al and Karen in our monthly associate meetings but we don't believe that's why they do what they do. To Toyota Associates improving a process is really just part of their job. Now as I said earlier consistency is a key factor to continuous improvement. Also we mentioned how's your process? It's our daily check-in. Well, we do something similar in the office environment also. Every day at 1.30 in the afternoon, we hold a quality assurance meeting. All right, probably similar to what, what you do. I'll play a video while I'll explain what's happening during the meeting. Quality is a cornerstone of Toyota, which means if there's a faulty part in our Toyota forklift, we want to know about it. All right, now if we could roll the video, uh, you'll see that the meeting itself is happening. But I'll, I'll mention that the uh, quality assurance meeting then focuses on individual parts that are part of that forklift, all right? So once we know about it, if there's a problem with the part, we want to analyze it. So what we do is we pay for the part to come back from the customer, ship it back to our factory at our cost. Now most companies do the same thing, but what happens when they get the part back? If they don't analyze it, look at it, do anything they can to improve it, they miss an opportunity to improve their overall process. So we built this into our process, this type of meeting, this type of review. When we receive a warranty part, we bring it to our daily meeting, we bring it to the engineers, the managers, the designers that were all involved in making the part. The goal is to get it right, to get the right experts and decision makers in the room to examine the failed part, okay? 
And, and if there's any defect in it, we got to determine the countermeasures to take to ensure the same defect doesn't happen again. All right, so that's what happens in our, uh, our 130 daily meeting. Another example of consistency to support our drive for continuous improvement is at 7.30 in the morning, we have a daily Kaizen meeting. Every day we meet for 20 minutes. Again, I'll play a video while I talk about this meeting. We begin our day, a 20 minute meeting, and we talk about what happened the day before. We actually call this meeting room our adrenaline room. There's no chairs. <laughs> you gotta be full of adrenaline if you wanna come into this room and, and talk about it. We discuss three things. What went right yesterday, what went wrong yesterday, and what we can do better today. So in 20 minutes, every department leader has an opportunity to present data and information to look for ways to improve. We talk about everything from safety. Matter of fact, we start every sort of meeting with safety. Even my uh, staff meetings, we start with safety. Then we talk about production numbers, maintenance issues, how many people called in sick yesterday, what is the weather forecast for today, Anything that affects our day, we talk about in this 20-minute meeting. Wouldn't it be great to have a 20-minute meeting that quick, by the way? I'm sure you've been in some long meetings that uh, you'd love to push the fast forward button and get through it. Now, during this meeting, there's a lot of data on the walls. The purpose of that fast forward view was to show how the group moves around the room. Did you see that, how they move around the room? And on the walls, a lot of charts, a lot of data. When I take visitors into this adrenaline room, a lot of them comment, Good. What are all these colored pencils over here? What are these colored markers over here? So I'd like to mention that we have, this is an example. There's a note of paper on the screen that shows data for the whole month. We believe that asking a manager or an associate to come in and color in the chart by hand versus a computer just pushing the print button and it prints it out, you're coloring that in by hand. That leaves a stronger impact with that individual. It has somewhat of a psychological effect to drive home their personal accountability. Whatever color it is, whether it was good or bad day, X or, or circle, um, and it, we really feel that drives home some personal accountability. By the way, it saves paper. Otherwise, they have 30 pieces of paper for every day of the month, right? We have one piece of paper for the whole month, and then just 30 times it's color coded in. Just, just a small little note to share with you. Now, in addition to the troubleshooting, there's another benefit to having these meetings first thing in the morning. When you begin the day thinking about continuous improvement, it stays in your mind all day. A long time ago, I think some of these meetings were at the end of the day and you want to review the day. We like starting in the, in the morning, you're fresh, and you're gonna think about continuous improvement throughout the whole day. Now before long, the drive to identify ways to improve becomes a habit, and it's something you do without even thinking about it. Now this is called the Toyota Mindset. The Toyota Mindset, or TPS Mindset. It can be a blessing. Right? environments like this, or if you're my wife or 12-year-old daughter, it can be a curse because they don't always appreciate the rules of TPS principles that I implement in our own house. Like the rule, this is my stairway in my house, don't walk up the stairs empty-handed. Stage everything on the bottom of the stairs, it needs eventually to be upstairs, and then when you see it, pick it up, take it upstairs, put it where it belongs, don't just take it up the stairs, put it where it belongs. You can hear or see my 12-year-old eyes roll right now, right, in the back of her head. But she, she's starting to get it. So I think with a, with a TPS mindset, you won't have wasted steps or misplaced items even in your house or garage. I bet there's some of you out there that have your tools in your garage exactly in the right spot every day, every time the hammer is here, right? That's me. All right, another tool we utilize are electronic and on boards. I'm sure you've seen these before also. They are great examples of how data can be used in a smart factory type of environment. Think big data and how this can help you in your environment. And on words are a visualization tool that display real-time data related to our daily production and our daily processes. There's 34 steps on that main assembly line. The yellow areas, we've got a problem area right during that instance. The steering area, the counterweight area, and the front protector at the area. So it's a great visualization, quickly I can see, anyone can see how the factory is doing. It's presented in a format that clearly identifies where we have any problems or opportunities. Now, and on boards help us support Genshi Genbetsu, which means actual place, actual thing, or in other words, go and see with your own eyes. Right, so and on boards combined with Genshi Genbetsu 
results in real-time data driving real-time action. And recently, we've included these electronic data boards in our office environment so that everyone can visualize our daily situation quickly and react accordingly. By the way, this process is not that expensive as we develop the software in-house using uh, SQL data and, and re resulting really a minimal investment. Might want to uh, investigate that if you're not using it already. And with technology, this is great. The daily information can also be easily displayed on an iPad. This is actually one of our iPads that you can walk around and see what's happening real time, real data. Now, one other visualization tool I thought I'd share with you, we just started this year. And our factory involves a, a uniform system. It's a color-coded basis based on the associate's position. So we wanted everyone to be able to quickly identify a team leader if needed, or a quality inspector if needed, or someone trained in health and safety. They wear a different colored shirt, just to name a, a couple examples. Um, new hires and temporary workers especially appreciate this idea. They don't know everybody. We've got 1,500 people in our factory. But when you have someone new, the color coding really helps. Uh, I've seen also color coded hats and baseball caps in factories in Japan, maybe even armbands, just any ideas to help uh, you with your visualization for your associates. So I encourage you to create some new visualization tools, uh, but be careful. I can't believe this actually existed. They said no thumbtacks in wall. What did they do? They put the sign up with thumbtacks. <laughs> So then their employees had a little bit of fun with them. They put up a post and what's that all about? So then someone wrote underneath that, no sticky notes on signs, with a sticky note, right? And I think after that it says, uh, uh, no sticky notes on sticky notes. And then the last one says, no purple sticky notes. So be careful with your ideas about visualization and really think it through. Now I'd like to circle back to Genshi Gambetsu which is a principle that I, I really love, I live by, I do, and I preach to others. When I'm not in a meeting, I like to walk around the factory. I tell people, you don't have to have your MBA, but I'd like you to work on your MWBA. That's management by walking around. I think it's very important. Genshi Gambetsu throughout the factory is important, but it can also be applied outside of the factory environment, whether it's the office environment or Go and see where and how your products are being used. Early in my Toyota career, I was in charge of product planning, and I would strive to visit 20 customers a year. Some of the best Kaizen ideas we have ever heard were from our dealers and our customers. Okay? Now, speaking of getting out of the factory environment, now I'd like to share a system that involves the principles of TPS in an office environment, too. It's called Toyota Industries Business Practices. Let's hear about it from Toyota's Director of HR and Training, Tracy Stefania. TIBP isn't a method or skill, but rather a business practice that is understood by all Toyota associates. It consists of eight steps of problem solving and 10 points of drive and dedication, and is intended to help achieve improved work performance. In the Toyota world, we define a job as existing work plus Kaizen, or continuous improvement, because we believe we can always find ways to do things better. By practicing TIVP, we improve our organizational competitiveness by maximizing output with minimal resources. We do this by applying the plan, do, check, act cycle, commonly referred to as the PDCA cycle. We find that by applying the PDCA cycle, we make better business decisions leading to improved performance. While